move right along and uh, just say a few things about it you already know, but we need to be reminded of. Down just one hair on it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 13, and uh, the Bible said this. Here's, your, here's what your Bible says. The Bible, the greatest book in the world, the only perfect book in the world. Matter of fact, the only perfect thing in the world is the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15, very well-known verse. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. I want to preach on the way of transgressors. The Bible said the way of transgressors is hard. Do you know there's nothing in the Bible about the Christian life being hard? You have battles, you have trials, we have burdens, we have persecution. But the Bible don't say it's hard. The Bible said my yoke is easy and my burden is light. We, we fight hard sometimes and we, we suffer in the Christian life. But as far as just to having a hard time, um, in, in that sense, the Bible said the way of transgressors is hard. Now you're going to have, hard, some, have hard times in life knowing if you live for the Lord or not. Everybody does. But you're a whole lot better off to serve God and do right and be blessed for it than to live for the devil and have to pay for it. So uh, the Bible said the way of transgressors is hard. It seems like in Christians, um, uh, you know, you, you, you have it hard, but there's somebody with you. But the sinner only has pleasure for a while and then eternal suffering in this world and in the world to come. So I want to say a few things about the way of transgressor this evening. First of all, the way of the sinner is the way of bitterness. If a man decides, or a woman, or a boy or girl, decides to live their life in sin, they're going to wind up being in bitterness. The Bible said sin at last, it bites like a serpent and stings like an adder. The Bible talks about that adulterous woman and said her end is bitterness. Have you ever seen... Uh, some of you are not old enough to do it, uh, have it yet, but uh, some of us are old enough to remember movie stars back from the uh, uh, days, you know, the 70s and 80s and 90s, and oh, they were the most beautiful woman in the world, and everybody, and then all of a sudden you start seeing a new face on all the magazines, and whatever happened to them? Uh, whatever happened to all them old, old movie stars, they're somewhere sitting in an old mansion in Hollywood, all wrinkled up, ashamed to come out of the house. They've lost their beauty. They've lost their uh, job offers. And they drink liquor and sit there, a bitter, old, uh, evil woman. Many of them wind up like that. The way of a sinner is the way of bitterness. Man thinks sin is sweet. It seems like it to start with, but then it turns bitter and never satisfied. Ladies and gentlemen, Solomon, uh, uh, he could have hired Bill Gates uh, to mow his grass and Donald Trump take his trash out. Solomon was a rich man. And the Bible said that Solomon had everything a person could ask for. And he said, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. If we'd ever get it through our head that this, this life, I was, I was coming through Charlotte. Uh, late last night, uh, uh, coming home. And, you know, I looked over and seen all those big buildings in Charlotte and everything. And it's pretty. It really is. It's pretty to look at. But I can't look at it without seeing down in there. There's people being stabbed. There's somebody's heart broke. Some kid crying. Some kid being mistreated, raped. Some drug deals going on. It, this old world is not what it's cracked up to be. This old world puts on a pretty front. But I'm telling you tonight, at the bottom of that lifestyle, is bitterness. Uh, uh, it's very, very, very bitter. Said one time years ago, this man was sitting in a bar uh, up in New Jersey, and he's sitting there at a bar having a few drinks. And about that time, a friendly man come up and sat down beside him and begin to talk. And a little bit, another friendly man come up beside him and begin to talk. And after they had a few drinks, the friendly man was gone, and so was his wallet. And they took him away. Now that's the way sin is. Sin come up. Somebody said, oh, man, you're cool, I love you, you're my friend, and then, bam, it gets you. If there's one thing you kids need to get, 
through your head at an early age, it would be this. When you play around with sin, it will come back and bite you. It will bite you. That Bible said, be sure your sin will find you out. And mamas and daddies, it don't hurt us to hear this once in a while. Sin's still wrong. Sin's still bad. Sin ain't never been, uh, well, it might whitewash it, but it's still sin. Amen? I'm telling you, brother, you, you, you can call a stink perfume all you want to, but it still stinks. And that's the way sin is this evening. The Bible said in Proverbs 17, 25, a foolish son is bitterness. Romans chapter 3 and verse 14, it said their mouth is full of bitterness. Isaiah 24 and verse 9 said strong drink shall be bitter to them that drink it. Uh, the Bible said and, and that Peter went out and wept bitterly. It caused him bitterness when he sinned against the Lord. The Bible said in Acts 8, 23, he, Paul looked at that guy, I think Peter 1, he said, thou art in the gall of bitterness. The way of the sinner is the way of bitterness. Amen. And ladies and gentlemen, you hear me this evening, it will make you bitter. I'm telling you, the prodigal son found it out. Judas found it out. Saul found it out. Adam and Eve found it out. Cain found it out. Samson found it out. It out. Uh, you, you get in a fight. Uh, you, you, like, you think all them buddies are your buddy down there. You wind up getting in a fight. And then you wind up getting in a divorce. You wind up getting arrested. And you wind up getting in jail. And you wind up getting your teeth knocked out. And then you wind up having to go to court. You wind up having to pay a bunch of fines. And you wind up having... That's the way of sin. Uh, the devil paints you a pretty picture, kids. But don't you believe it. He'll show you them little girls on TV. Miley Cyrus and all them little girls on there twisting or anything. Thing. Man, they got it made. You just watch their life for just a little while. They're already going down. They're already going down. If we could ever get it through our heads tonight, young people, listen to me, uh, that the way of sinner is the way of bitterness, you'd be a lot better off. Number two, I would say secondly tonight, the way of the sinner is the way of slavery. The way of a transgressor is the way of slavery. Did you know the Bible said he that committeth sin is a servant of sin? Do you understand tonight that when you live a life of sin, you are not living free, you are under its power, and you are a slave to it. Uh, it, it, always, it always fascinated me. Years ago, when all them hippies came out, that I, and I used to pick them up hitchhiking all the time. You don't see them much anymore. Here's a guy, he got on combat boots up to there, weighs about 10 pounds each, and an old pair of nasty blue jeans, ain't had a bath in a week. Or longer, big old backpack on his on his on his. It's a hundred degrees, and him sweating like a dog. And he's out there, old old gruffy beard, and ain't got to shave, and and all and and starving and everything else. And I pick him up, pitch, and I say, "Man, what are you doing?" He said, "Man, I'm just free, man. I'm just free." And I said, "Lord, you people in jails got it better off than you do. I mean, at least they got they get three meals a day and place to sleep." And and I'm telling, that's what the devil does. The devil makes you think. Freedom, let me tell you something, kids, listen to me. The devil makes you think freedom is doing what you want to. If you, nobody can tell me what to do, I'm going to do it. But guess what? As soon as you start doing what you want to, something starts getting a hold of you. And we have an addictive nature. You heard me preach that at the youth rally, and I drove it home and drove it home. We are by nature addicts. I mean, we're a, we have an addictive nature. They say anything you do for 30 days becomes a part of your life. And I believe that. I, you get up and read your Bible five chapters every day for 30 days, and on that 31st day, you'll automatically think, I need to do it again. It becomes a part of brushing your teeth, combing your hair, uh, uh, do it, uh, like, like running. You know, people ask me all the time, they said, uh, Danny, you run today? Yes. Danny, you run today? Yes. It's become a part of my life. I don't always like it. I don't always hate it. But uh, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes when I run, it feels like my feet weigh a ton. And then other times, it just I feel like I'm just bouncing. And I don't understand that, but it, it becomes a part of it. We get addicted to it. You get addicted. You get addicted to exercise. You get addicted to sleep. You get addicted to eating. You get addicted to all kinds of stuff. There's a lady the other day down at the hospital. It was Carrie, a nurse. And I come in there the other day, and I said, it's, it's uh, 99 degrees outside. And that girl said, well, I guess I can't run today. And I said, why? Ain't going to hurt you. That's good for you. Sweat a little bit. And I, you know why? Because it becomes a part of you. I, uh, uh, several years ago, um, I, I got uh, to where I, 
I was uh, uh, gaining a little weight. I know y'all like, but it's true. And, uh, and so I, my girls was all on that Atkins diet, and I said, I'm quitting drinking Pepsis. I'm quitting drinking Pepsis because Pepsis is one of the worst things you can do uh, to drink for you unless you drink Mountain Dew, and the only thing worse than Mountain Dew is sun drop. It's getting quiet in here. But, uh, but anyway, I love it, and I love Pepsi. I don't care nothing about Mountain Dew, don't care nothing about sun drop, but I like Pepsi. I love Pepsi. And I didn't drink while well, I put them down, buddy. And I didn't drink one for, I guess it's three or four months, I didn't drink a Pepsi. And Pepsi's not illegal. Pepsi's not even sinful. And, but I just saw, I thought I'm better off without this. And all that syrup and all that old goo and gum in your veins and everything. I thought I'm better off without it. Sugar, all of that stuff. And I quit and I quit and I quit and I quit. And then the youth rally came. And then I was fasting. I was praying. And I was fasting. And I was praying. And I was fasting. And I was praying. And man, that youth rally finally come. And that last day of that youth rally. You know how when you've really worked hard or you've really tried to do something, Lord, you sort of want to pet yourself a little bit. Does anybody else like that? You sort of just say, well, I deserve something. I'm going to be good to myself. Well, it was youth rally, and I drug a Pepsi. And I said, man, Lord, have mercy. I forgot how good that tastes. I, and it, it tastes like pure sugar. And, uh, I actually hadn't had one for a while. And I said, uh, I, I'm not going to get started on them again. Uh, but, and then about three days later, I drug another one. And about two days later, I drug another one. And about, I was drinking. And, five, and, and I got back every day, every day. And here, I've been drinking one. I, I drink one just about every day last week. And the other day, I worked real hard. I worked all day Thursday. He was out there putting up that, that big pile of brush in my yard. And, man, it was 90, 95 degrees outside. I was sweating. Hadn't ate a bite all day long. And I was shaking when I come in. And I had to leave for that revival. And it was about 1230. And I eat a bite. I was still shaking. And uh, I said, Lord, in mercy, I'm, I'm dehydrated or something. And I went down there to that revival. Drove three hours to preach Thursday evening. And I got a Pepsi. I started stopped at QT. I love them places. Them QT stores, ain't them? Uh, quick Trip, whatever they are, I love it. I stopped there, boy, and I got me a big Pepsi about that big, and I drunk a fool out of that thing. And I thought, I need nourishment. I need this, and I did. I did, and I loved it. And you know what? Uh, that's, I'm a, that's, an, uh, that's an addictive thing. Sugar is addictive. Sugar is very addictive. Can anybody here say amen to that? And I love it. I love chocolate. I love ice cream. I know a woman in here tonight. I ain't going to call no names. But she hides candy and cookies here and there. I ain't naming no names. God knows. Sometimes I'll get in the car and stashed underneath the, underneath the seat will be a little pack of Oreos. Look like a rat's been nibbling on them. And I'm not naming no name. This woman thinks that as long as you just, as you just eat an Oreo right now, it won't hurt you. But then the next time you come through the house, you eat another Oreo. And then the next time you walk through it, you eat another Oreo. And I do the same thing. That's where she learned it from me. Because you think, well, a little bite of candy, a little bite of candy, a little bite of candy. And I said all that to say this. There ain't nothing wrong with eating some candy. There ain't nothing wrong with some sugar. There ain't nothing wrong with some in moderation. But I'm telling you, if sin, if, if, if sugar's that addictive and chocolate's that addictive, what do you think bad movies are? What do you think alcohol drugs are? Your body devours it. Your body gets addicted to it. They say there's some drugs, you take them one time, you're hooked. The way of sin is the way of slavery. If you drink alcohol, cigarettes, any, anything, your body gets addicted to it. And Paul said, I will not be brought under the power of any. I don't care if it's iced tea. I, you ought to be able to fast a day and not have none of that stuff. I am not going to let it be my boss. And I, by the grace of God, I ain't perfect. We sin. I sin every day. I don't want to. I don't mean to always. But I'm telling you one thing, by God's grace, I'm not going to let sin run my life. I'm not supposed to. Don't have to.
Brother Derek brought a great lesson the other morning. He was talking about we don't have to sin. That's true. You don't have to. You do, but you don't have to. There's nothing in the Bible that says you have to sin every day. But I'm telling you one thing. We don't have to be a slave to it. The way of sin is the way of slavery. Amen? That's right. Number three, the way of transgressor is the way of hardness of heart. Do you know the more you sin, the harder your heart gets? You know, you hear the gospel when you're young and you're really tender to it and you know the Lord there and you know there's a heaven and you know there's a hell and every time you say no to God, your heart gets just a little bit harder. You know the hardest people in the world to win to God is older people? You wouldn't think that, would you? Wouldn't you think that somebody got out and done everything they wanted to and then they're facing the last few years of their life? You'd think they'd all get saved, but it ain't that way. The truth is, it's rare for an older person to get saved. I can count on one hand the people I've seen over 75 get saved since I've been preaching. Just a very, very few. You know what that proves? The longer you sin, the harder your heart gets toward God. I've seen people. I knew a man that was over in Asheville, and somebody called me and said, will you please go over and witness to my daddy, and uncle, somebody. I forgot, I forgot his name now. They said, will you go over there and witness to him? He's dying. He's got days to live. And I went over there, and I was the sick sixth preacher that had been to see that man. He's laying there dying. He ain't never going to get out of that bed. He ain't never going to go home. And I asked him, do you want to get saved? And he said, I'm not ready yet. He can't go party. He'll never be able to go to a nightclub. He'll never be able to watch TV. He's dying and laying there. And I don't know if that man ever got saved. You know what that proves? Kids, listen to me. It proves that every day you live in sin, your heart gets just a little bit harder toward God. I'm telling you tonight, if you can still feel conviction and you can still feel God dealing with you and you can still feel, you ought to shout and thank God. Your heart ain't so hard that you still feel his power and presence. Hallelujah. But I was preaching last night and it got real and I felt the Lord and I started crying. There's a group of people got up. They wasn't professional. Just to note, some old guy got up. I didn't think it was going to be much at all. One man played the piano and a lady stood right here and uh, he sung a song about I'm going home and it got real and it like I turned something turned flip my soul brother I'm glad I can still feel the Lord's presence when you can't feel him no more and you can't cry no more your heart is getting hard you better keep yourself where you can cry once in a while good for you number four the way of a sinner is the way of death the wages of sin is death God told Adam and Eve in the day you eat thereof, you'll die. They died that day spiritually. They died later on physically. But the way of sinner is the way of death. You say, oh, preacher, that ain't what he meant. Oh, yeah. Bible said, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Before you meet the Lord, you are dead in trespasses and sin. You have a live body, a dead spirit. When you get saved, you have a live spirit and your dead body. You reckon it dead from then on, every day of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, the way of the sinner is the way of death. I've, I've, uh, I've visited people. I've talked to people dying with cancer, turned yellow in the hospital. I, I've seen them laying there. I mean, just yellow. I mean, as good night, I don't even see anything. Uh, the color, their, their body, they're, they're like them flowers right there. Uh, just turn yellow from that uh, alcohol poisoning and uh, whatever it is, jaundice or something in their body. And they're laying there. And I, all I can think of, the wages of sin, the wages of sin. We visited a girl in the hospital, me and Kelly, uh, uh, the other day in Asheville Hospital. Her leg was split all the way down through there where she went having dirty needles in there and, and just in infected and laying there all, almost to the point of death. Laying there, I thought the wages of sin, the wages of sin, the wages of sin, sin. I know you've heard this a hundred times. We've all heard it, but it don't hurt to hear it again. Sin will take you further than you want to go, kids. Sin will keep you longer than you want to stay, and sin will cost you far more than you want to pay. We got this idea of, well, I can go out and sin and run in and ask God to forgive me and everything will be all right. 
life. God will forgive you, but there's always consequences. Always consequences to sin. It leaves a scar. It leaves, there's a payday. You reap what you sow. The wages of sin is death, the Bible says. And finally, number five, and I'm through. The way of a sinner is the way of condemnation. Most people live like they'll never give an account of their life to nobody. But God's out there waiting on you. Said this man one time, went and robbed this house. It was a bad winter day and snow all over the place. And he went and broke in somebody's house and stole all their stuff and got out there during the day and he thought, there ain't nobody out on a day like this. I've got away with it. And the police come over to investigate and they got to looking around and looking around and somebody said, look, and when that guy had all their stuff in there, he backed his car into that snow bank and his license plate took it was right in that snow, just like them letters right there. And all they had to do is go over to his house and arrest him. And that's the way sin is. You think you got it covered up and hid, but there's always, you slip up somewhere. Said a guy one time, you remember years ago, some of y'all don't even remember this, and you kids don't, years ago, the old time, Lord, before my generation come up, I remember seeing old movies, and the guy that run the camera, he'd take a camera, and he'd, he'd, he'd put a blanket over his head, I don't know why they'd done that, uh, but he, he'd put a big blanket over his head, and he'd look, like that, you know, and he'd take pictures with this, these group of guys, uh, one time this guy was taking their pictures, and they, and they got him, beat him up, and took his money, and they robbed him. But they forgot about something. The negative in that camera. They thought, we'll get this money and run. Nobody will never know it. Had them on, had them on film. And I'm going to tell you all something. You may think nobody knows what you're doing or where you're at. And God's got a camera right on you. Click. 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 In your room at night. Click. Whatever you look on your phone. Click, he's got a picture of it. He's got a picture of it. I preached last night, and I said, I mean, there's a bunch of older people, and I said, you better not be looking at trash on your phone, listening to dirty music, looking at dirty pictures. And I said, buddy, it got quiet as a, a death chamber in there. We're thinking that just because your wife don't know or know that it's all right, it's not all right. God knows, God knows. The way of the sinner is the way of condemnation. I said a man one day is driving down the road. And he's driving down the road. And he saw a bumper sticker. It said at the end of the road you'll meet God. Now, at the end of the road I'll meet God. At the end of the road I'll meet God. He pulled over on the side of the road and got saved. And I'm going to tell you all the same thing tonight. There she's going to come get us a song. At the end of the road, you'll meet God. You hear me? At the end of the road, you'll meet God. Let's get our heart ready to meet him tonight. Let's stand by our head for prayer. The way of a transgressor is hard. Every head bowed.